RC parts and accessories are made out of a variety of materials from plastics to metals, and they all have their own unique qualities and properties that make them ideal for different applications. So today we're gonna to talk about some of the materials that you'll commonly find in RC, and then why you'd wanna use them. In RC, it's common to find RC parts made out of plastic, aluminum, carbon fiber, titanium, and it's also common to see steel parts as well as brass parts sometimes. And all of these different materials have their place in RC and offer you something unique like being really lightweight or maybe being heavy or perhaps removing flex from your vehicle or adding it. Now, before we dive into this, I should say as a disclaimer, for the purposes of this video, we're gonna try to keep this topic simple. Materials in general could be really complex and in depth when you dive into it. So this is in no way an overall guide to materials. It's just meant to be a rough guide to how some of these materials pertain to RC. So our first material up is plastic. Plastic is a lightweight, inexpensive material that can be molded into just about any shape that you need it to be. In general, plastics have a fair amount of flex to them, so in an impact, the material can absorb that energy, flex, and then return to shape. This isn't always the case though. Plastics can be made in a wide variety of mixtures or composites, so it varies from brand to brand or with the mixture of plastic that they made. But in general, plastic does flex. And with plastic, the amount of flex is generally affected by the outside temperature outside. In really cold outside ambient temperatures, plastic tends to stiffen up and become a bit more brittle and can be broken easier. When it's really hot outside, plastic does the opposite. It tends to loosen up and become a lot softer and have even more flex. Plastic parts are also prone to just wearing out over time. Wear and tear takes a toll on them and they tend to lose their tolerances. Like in the suspension arm, we'll put the hinge pin through that hole can kind of wallow out. Or in a hub where you'll put the bearings before you slide the axle through, those bearing holes that hold the bearings, they can just kind of wallow out over time. And you'll notice your suspension parts kind of just having more play and more wiggle. In a hard crash, plastic does have its limits before it will snap. RPM plastic parts do a really phenomenal job at providing a lot of flex to the whatever part it is, so it can just absorb that impact energy and then return back to shape. They're really good upgrades in certain applications. Things like suspension arms and hubs and steering parts, whatever may have already broken on your vehicle just from experience, those would be good items to upgrade to that more durable RPM part. Next up is aluminum, which is a strong, rigid, and lightweight metal, although it will not be as lightweight as that plastic equivalent part. An aluminum upgrade is also gonna be more expensive than that plastic part. There's a lot of different alloys to aluminum. Some of the common ones in RC are like 6061 and 7075. 7075 is gonna be the stronger of the two, but it's usually reserved for chassis and things like that. In addition to the different aluminum alloys, there's also different processes to produce that part. There's casting and there's machining. Between a casted and a machine part, a machine part is gonna be more expensive. But a machined aluminum part is also very strong. It's gonna be really stiff and rigid, and it's gonna have really tight tolerances to it because the computer process keeps the tolerances especially tight and exact. And it's not gonna wear out as fast as a plastic part will. And unlike plastic, that machined aluminum part is not gonna flex at all. It's gonna stay stiff and rigid regardless of the temperatures outside. So when you crash, an aluminum part just won't break like a plastic part. Instead Instead, aluminum tends to bend on a really hard impact. It is possible to bend the piece back into shape, but it's been compromised and it's gonna be a lot weaker bent back and more prone to wanna to bend in that same location again. Since aluminum can be a whole lot more durable and precise over plastic, they're great for things like your hubs, hinge pin blocks, or steering parts, like the bell cranks and steering rack, where you want a really nice, precise feel. Aluminum servo horns are also really popular popular and they're a great way to bulk up the strength of that steering system and to avoid stripping out the internal spline on that servo horn, which is common with plastic horns. But you have to watch out with using those really strong aluminum servo horns and steering parts because if you have a servo that only has like plastic gears inside that may not be that strong under a really hard impact if your tires are hit or jerk.
work, it could be that your servo gears, those plastic gears, will be the ones then to strip out and break. So in this case, it may be better to keep using that plastic servo horn so in the event of a really hard collision, you strip out that servo horn rather than the servo because the servo horn is a lot less expensive to replace. Aluminum option parts can also be a really great way to just remove flex out of your vehicle, making them great tuning aids. Things like aluminum shock towers, chassis, upper decks, bulkheads, top plates, chassis braces, those are great ways to stiffen up your platform and to remove flex that the plastic counterparts would have provided. So aluminum options are great tuning aids. They're pretty dang durable and they look pretty nice too. You can get aluminum option parts in a variety of different anodized colors, which can help you go with a particular style or the look that you're going for. Now, the last thing I wanna mention about aluminum is that it's a really great heat conductor. So aluminum tends to wanna to absorb heat away from a heat source. This is why you see aluminum used as motor plates and heat sinks and RCs, but aluminum can be really good in those high heat situations or applications. The next material is carbon fiber, which just consists of tons of carbon bundles being held together by an epoxy, and then it's layered in to make flat sheets of various thicknesses. You can then take these flat sheets and make things like chassis, shock towers, to upper decks, uh, some steering parts, really any parts that are just flat, you can make out of carbon fiber. Carbon parts are generally more expensive than plastic, but they're gonna be more lightweight than the equivalent plastic part. Carbon is also gonna be stay stiffer and more rigid than plastic, but it is generally not stiffer and more rigid than uh, that equivalent aluminum piece. Of course, there's a lot of variables, how thick the carbon is and what grade that aluminum is, but if you took two equivalent shock towers, uh, chances are that the aluminum shock tower is gonna be more rigid than the carbon, but the carbon will be more lightweight. But the point is, is that carbon fiber will flex a little bit and it's not affected by the outside temperatures. Although in certain really extreme climates, the epoxy holding all those fiber bundles together could be in really cold temperatures, but since carbon fiber is so lightweight, it's really a great upgrade if you're trying to shed weight from your vehicle or lower the weight um, of parts that are up high, like carbon shock towers are really popular because uh, those pieces usually sit at the high point of your vehicle. And so by dropping or reducing that weight up top, you can effectively lower the CG of your vehicle, the center of gravity. Now during a crash, carbon parts will flex a little bit, but when hit hard enough, they'll either crack or delaminate when the layers of carbon start separating and sometimes the carbon piece can just break completely. But the strength and rigidity of a carbon fiber piece is really determined by how thick it is. With it, with the thicker the carbon fiber piece, the more stiff and rigid that it will retain. And carbon fiber hop-ups and accessories, they just look really good. That woven carbon fiber look is pretty dang nice. And we're seeing more and more carbon fiber pieces come colored in a way, uh, which is pretty neat if that's something you like. The next material is brass, which is an alloy consisting of copper and zinc, and brass parts are heavy. Brass parts are just primarily used to add weight to your vehicle. Somewhere low on the chassis, they're really popular with rock crawlers and trail trucks. Uh, some race buggies also use these really thin brass plates that are placed underneath the battery. Uh, the idea is just to add weight down low so you can lower the center of gravity. There's some brass option parts for more of the race crowd that will turn your plastic bulkhead into a brass one or instead of aluminum bulkhead you can use a brass one or maybe a suspension hinge pin holder will be available on brass it's just to add more weight to certain areas or locations on your vehicle now I want to touch on steel parts which are very strong and they also have some heaviness to them but generally steel parts are not as heavy as brass Steel is often used as hinge pins, hardware of course, the screws, maybe shock shafts, uh, maybe transmission gears, pinion gears, things like that. It's really the go-to metal when you need really high strength for a reasonable price with the byproduct of extra weight. Now like I mentioned, steel isn't as heavy as brass, but it's way stronger. Because of this, steel parts, they don't flex, they're not affected by the weather, and they don't lose their tolerance as easily. Sometimes steel parts are offered as an alternative to a plastic part like a steel spur gear or a steel transmission gears and because those steel parts are so dang strong they're 
really great upgrades for uh, high performance bashers or high torque needs like for rock crawlers and trail trucks. But steel hop-ups aren't usually all that common. Your vehicle probably already comes with the necessary steel parts in those key areas, but you do sometimes find hardened steel gears available or hardened steel hinge pins, uh, things like that. Our last material that we're gonna mention is titanium, and it's one of the most exotic metals available. And like aluminum, titanium comes in a wide variety of different titanium alloys, with grade five probably being the most common that we see in RC. Grade five is also known as 6AL4V. Grade 5 titanium is really strong and it's really lightweight. And in fact, it has one of the highest strength to weight ratios available. Now, since producing titanium parts is really intensive and it's really expensive, and titanium can also be machined, kind of like how we talked about with those aluminum parts, it's just expensive. So titanium parts tend to be the most expensive accessories in RC. And because of that, titanium isn't usually made to make bigger parts. You don't see titanium chassis really they would be super expensive instead titanium parts are usually kind of the smaller bits and pieces in RC and they're usually the parts that you would use as an alternative to a steel part so that means your titanium accessories and hop-ups are probably gonna be parts like uh, titanium screws and ball studs maybe gears transmission shafts um, nuts various hardware things like that titanium parts also hold their tolerances really well they're not affected by the outside temperature and they do not flex under impact. Instead, a really hard collision will cause titanium to just shear off or it'll break off, but sometimes it can also bend. But machine grade five titanium upgrades are some of the best out there for exceptional strength while being virtually weightless. These parts are great for the high points in your vehicle. When you want to reduce all that weight and lower the center of gravity, you can use titanium screws in conjunction with a carbon fiber shock tower, something like that, it'll really reduce the weight up high in your vehicle. So there are a lot of different types of materials out there and their strength or grade can vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. But in general, you will find that the aluminum upgrades are gonna be a, a hop up or accessory for some plastic part. Carbon fiber upgrades are gonna be an alternative to a plastic or aluminum part. Titanium parts are usually there as an alternative to a steel part. And then brass parts are just there to add weight wherever it can. Guys, you should check out Wiki if you want more information on any of these metals the various alloys. It's really interesting stuff and there's tons of info out there. I'm sure I missed some stuff, so leave any questions or comments you have for us down below. Hit that like button and subscribe for our future videos. I'm Brett from A Main Hobbies. Thanks for watching.